during our last read aloud. Let me back up just a little bit. Two great friends are looking for Mole's house. And they dived down the hole. And here's where they ended up. We've been talking about themes. Do you remember? There really are four themes we've been talking about. Friendship and loyalty, hospitality, responsibility, and irresponsibility. And then we've been talking about literary tools, the tools that authors use when they're writing, um, perspective, dialogue, and narration. So think about those. We'll have some questions about those after we do our read aloud. This is Dolce Domum, part two. Dolce Domum means home sweet home. There's no place like home. Home is the best place to be. It was close and airless and the earthy smell was strong. The mole struck a match, and by its light, the rat saw that they were standing on an open space. The space was neatly swept and sanded underfoot. Directly facing them was Mole's little front door, with Mole End painted in Gothic lettering over the bell pull at the side. Mole took down a lantern from a nail on the wall and lit it, and the rat, looking around him, saw that they were in a sort of forecourt, sort of like just a near an area near the front door. A garden seat stood on one side of the door, and on the other, a roller. The mole was a tidy animal and could not stand having his ground kicked up by other animals into little heaps of earth. So a roller, that would be this, would squish it down flat. Down on one side of the forecourt ran a skittle alley with benches along it and little wooden tables, and in the middle was a small round pond. Mole's face beamed at the sight of all these objects. He hurried Rat through the door, lit a lamp in the hall, and took a glance around his old home. Immediately he saw the dust lying thick on everything and saw the cheerless, deserted look of a long-neglected house and collapsed again on a high chair, on the hall chair. Oh, Ratty, he cried dismally. What? Why ever did I do it? Why did I bring you to this poor, cold little place on a night like this? The rat paid him no heed. He was running here and there, opening doors, inspecting rooms and cupboards and lighting lamps and candles. What a capital little house this is, he called out cheerily. Everything here and everything in its place. The first thing we want is a good fire. I'll fetch the wood and the coals and you get a duster. Encouraged by his companion, Mole dusted and polished with energy, while the rat soon had a cheerful blaze roaring up the chimney. He hailed the mole to come and warm himself. But Mole promptly had another fit of the blues. Rat, he moaned, how about your supper? You poor, cold, hungry, weary animal, I've nothing to give you. <sighs> what a fellow you are for giving in, said the rat calmly. Why, only just now I saw a sardine opener on the kitchen dresser, and everybody knows that means there are sardines about somewhere. Pull yourself together and come with me and forage. They went and foraged accordingly, hunting through every cupboard and turning out every drawer. The result was not so very depressing after all. A tin of sardines, a box of captain's cookies nearly full, and a German sausage encased in silver paper. Well, there's a banquet for you, observed the rat as he arranged the table. No bread, groaned the mole. No butter. No, no caviar, no champagne, continued the rat, grinning. And that reminds you, reminds me, what's that little door at the end of the passage? Your cellar, of course. Rat made for the cellar door and presently reappeared with a bottle in each paw and another under each arm. Now, wherever did you pick up those prints? Make the place look so homelike they do. No wonder you're so fond of it, Mole. Tell us all about it and how you came to make it what it is. The mole, much cheered by the rat's fine compliments, took time to show off his splendid abode. The rat, though desperately hungry, allowed the mole to hold court. 
At last, the rat succeeded in decoying him to the table and had just got seriously to work with the sardine opener when sounds were heard from the forecourt without, sounds like scuffling of small feet and a confused murmur of tiny voices. Now, all in the line, hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Clear your throat first. Where's young Bill? What's up? inquired the rat. I think it must be the field mice, replied the mole. They go round carol singing regularly at this time of year. I used to give them hot drinks and supper, too, sometimes. Let's have a look at them, cried the rat, jumping up and running to the door. It was a pretty sight that met their eyes. In the forecourt, lit by the dim rays of a lantern, some eight to ten little field mice stood in a semicircle. They had red scarves around their necks, and their forepaws were thrust deep into their pockets. With bright, beady eyes, they glanced slyly and shyly at each other. As the door opened, one of the elder ones that carried the lantern proclaimed, Now then, one, two, three, and forthwith their shrill little voices rose up into the chill night air. Villagers all this frosty tide, let your doors swing open wide, though wind may follow and snow beside. Yet draw us in by your fire to bide. Joy shall be yours in the morning. Here we stand in the cold and the sleet, blowing fingers and stamping feet. Come from afar you to greet, you by the fire and we in the street, bidding you joy in the morning. For ere one half of the night was gone, sudden a star has led us on, raining bliss and benison, Bliss tomorrow and more anon, joy for every morning. The voices ceased, the singers exchanged sidelong glances, and but for a moment only, and then from up and far away, down the tunnel, they had so lately traveled, came the sound of distant bells ringing a joyful and clangorous peal. Very well, son, boys, cried the rat heartily, and now come along and warm yourselves. Yes, come along, field mice, cried the mole eagerly. This is quite like old times. Shut the door after you. Pull up the settle to the fire. Now, you just wait a minute while we... Already, he cried in despair. We've nothing to give them. You leave that all to me, said the masterful rat. Here, you with the lantern, I want to talk with you. Now tell me, are there any shops open at this hour of the night? Why, certainly, sir, replied the field mouse respectfully. At this time of year, our shops keep open at, to all sorts of hours. Then look here, said the rat. You go off at once, you and your lantern, and you get me, and here, much muttered conversation ensued, such as fresh mind, and no, a pound of that will do, or if you can't get it there, try somewhere else. Yes, of course, homemade. Finally, there was a clink of coin passing from paw to paw. The field mouse was provided with a basket for his purchases, and off he hurried. The rest of the field mice, perched in a row on the settle, their small legs swinging, gave themselves up to enjoyment of the fire. The rat, meanwhile, was busy examining the label on one of the bottles. I perceive this to be ginger beer, he remarked approvingly. The very thing. Now she, we, now we shall be able to mull some ginger beer. Get the things ready, mole, while I draw the corks. It did not take long to prepare the brew, and soon every field mouse was sipping and coughing and choking, for a little mulled ginger beer, beer goes a long way, and wiping his eyes and laughing. They act plays, too, these fellows, the mole explained to the rat. Make them up all by themselves, and very well they do it, too. They gave us a capital one last year, about a field mouse who was captured at sea by pirates. Here, you, you were in it. Get up and recite a bit. The field mouse addressed, got up on his legs, giggled shyly, looked around the room, and remained absolutely tongue-tied. His comrades cheered him on. Mole coaxed and encouraged him, and the rat went so far as to shake him, but nothing could overcome his stage fright. The now mute field mouse was saved from further encouragement by the sound of the door opening. The field mouse with the lantern had reappeared for the heavy basket.
There was no more talk of play acting once the contents of the basket had been tumbled out onto the table. Under the general ship of rat, everybody was set to do something. In a very few minutes, supper was ready. As they ate, they talked of old times. They clattered off at last, very grateful indeed. When the door had closed on the last of them, Mole and Rat kicked the fire up, drew their chairs in, and discussed the events of the day. At last the Rat, with a tremendous yawn, said, Mole, I'm ready to drop. That your own bunk over there on that side? Very well, then, I'll take this. Rat clambered into his bunk and rolled himself well up in the blankets as slumber gathered him in.